Layer referencing is a new feature built into Anime Studio Pro 11. Essentially, you can duplicate layers, and those duplicates will refer to the original. If you make changes to the original, those changes will then be applied to the reference. As you can imagine, this can open up a wide range of new options when it comes to working with animations or working in a team-based setting. You could, for instance, have someone rigging a character, creating all the assets, and you could take a temporary rig of that character, place it in a scene, animate it out, and as the rigger builds the character more, you can update your rig, and all the changes will seamlessly integrate into your animation. So let me show you how this is all done. First, I have a rig opened up, and I'm just going to use this bone layer as an example. You could use any layer you want for this. It doesn't have to be a character. Now, I'm going to collapse this, and let me just get rid of this one really quick so we don't get confused. Now, I want to create a reference for this particular layer. With that layer highlighted or selected, come up here and choose the Reference Layer button. Now, you're going to see two copies of that layer in your Layers panel. But there is a difference. The top layer, if you look at the icon, has an arrow next to the bone. This indicates that this layer is referencing another layer somewhere else. When it's white, it means it's referencing something in the current document. So that makes sense since we are referencing this layer right here. Now, if you ever get confused, just click on that reference layer. You can see we now have a red border going around the original. This indicates that this layer is referencing the one with the red border. Finally, if you have a really complicated project, you can always right click on that reference layer and choose Locate Original Layer. It will then select the original layer, so that way you don't have to go digging through all your layers to find the original. Now, I want to come up here and click on the reference, and I'm simply going to move it so we can see the difference between the two. Right now, it's on top of the original layer, so we can't really see what's going on. I'll grab the Transform Layer tool, and I'm going to just bring it over to the left just like that, so now we can see both. Now when I release, I want you to make note of something here. Let me bring my timeline up just by coming down here and moving it up like so. You'll see I have a transform channel for the layer right here. This is because I moved the copy instead of the original. When you do things like this, let's say you add points to this rig or you move this rig without affecting the original, you're going to create independent channels which can be used in conjunction with shared channels that might be falling along with the original. And I'll touch more on that in a little bit. I just wanted to make note of it right now since that did appear. But now let's come back here to the original. I'll click once and I'm going to just come over here and grab the transform bone tool as a simple example. Now let's page forward to, let's say about frame 12. Now I'm going to move the arm. As I do this, you can see the reference is falling along with the original. It's kind of come in like this and anything I do, it's going to follow along with the original. And this is very powerful. Again, you could set up a master rig and modify that rig. Even if you add smart bones, layers, or vectors, it will update seamlessly with whatever you're doing in another document. So let's say, again, if you want to animate out a scene with a temporary rig, you can do that, because as the changes are made to the master rig and your reference file updates, those changes will just integrate right in. And to demonstrate it's not limited to bones, let's do something simple. I'll come in here to this original rig, and I'll grab the body layer. Select Shape Tool, we'll grab the body, and I'm just going to change the color. Click OK. You can see it applies, and the animation even occurs with it. Let me just undo that. So now, this is all fine and good, because there's many possibilities with just this alone. With the master rig example I mentioned, plus the ability to create, let's say, shadows. If you alter the subject, the shadow can change along with the subject, which speeds up the process of creating these assets. But now, let's say I'm working on this, and I get to a point where I realize I want the reference to be its own thing. 
but at the same time, I wanted to share attributes from the original. You can do this. First, you saw we did this before when we moved this layer. When we move the reference, let me come back up here and show the reference, we created that transform layer channel. And that's not on the original. Let me just bring this timeline up a bit so we can see more of what's going on here. Now, there's many shared channels going on here. If I go back and forth, you can see we have shared channels. These bones are being animated out for both, but the transform layer property is not. And this can go along with many different things. Let me once again come in here to the reference, and I want to just modify something. I'll come back here to, let's say, frame zero, and I'm going to go into that layer. And I'll access, once again, the body. Now note that all of my sublayers are also being referenced, and we know this because of the arrows. They're all white, indicating they are referencing a layer on my current document. Let me come down here to body and click, and I'm going to use the add point tool. Come in here, and I want to add some points to the body. Let's say I just want to modify the shape of the body for this reference layer. Well, I can go in there and click and create some points. And then I could just modify those points. Maybe I'm trying to make him skinnier. It's a little bit weird, but it looks pretty good. So I want to make him skinnier, and I went in and did that. So now, what you'll see in your layers is that the arrow turns red. This indicates that this reference is out of sync compared to the original. Now, that might be OK, because as you can see, the animation still plays out because we're not modifying the bones, we're only modifying the body. So only the body layer is having a conflict that allows you to continue to reference individual elements while changing others. But if you ever need to, you can right click on that layer that has a conflict and choose to update the layer reference. Now you have some options. For instance, if you know you added new layers to the original, you can check this box to make sure those new layers get incorporated into the reference. If you remove layers that no longer exist, you can check that one on as well. If you have mismatched vectors, and I'm going to check that one because I moved some points around, or if you have bone differences. If smart bones were added, smart bone dials, regular bones, physics bones, it doesn't matter. If any bones were changed, you can check this, and it will reference the original and update it accordingly. So once you're good, you can click OK. And now you can see my body was restored. The arrow is white, and he's once again fat. So hopefully, with that little demonstration, you can see the power of this. But there's one more thing I would like to show you. I'm going to make a new document. I'll use Command N or Control N if you're on Windows to do so. Now, I'll come up here to File, Import, Anime Studio Object. I want to locate my Bennett character. You can see it's right here. And I'm going to open it up. You can see we have two layers. And keep in mind, I have yet to save the file that we were just working on. So that's why the Bennett test layer is still visible. You'll remember I deleted it before we began. But I forgot to save the document. But this is a good example of what can be done with this. So I'm just going to select the layer I know I want to use. And I want to choose Import by Reference. This is a new option available in Anime Studio 11. Let's click that and click OK. You can see we now have the character on screen and we have reference files. We know this because there's arrows, but also they're now green. Why are they green? Whenever an arrow is green, that indicates it's referencing another document's layer. In this case, we're referencing this layer. However, if we come in here, you can see we only have mouth movements. We don't have any of the body animations. Well, that's because I forgot to save this file. Let me come over here, and I will choose to save with Command S or Control S if you're on Windows. Then I'm going to pop back over here. Notice what happened. Now everything is out of sync. It's all red. Why is that? Well, we saved the document, which updated the changes to the layer. This reference recognized that, and now it's saying, hey, something in that document happened. We need to make a change. All right. Come down here. We can right-click 
and then choose to update layer reference. And let's say as an example, because this is a great example of working on a team-based project. Maybe you have someone who is across the world and they are rigging your character. You have a temporary rig that you're working on at home and all of a sudden all your arrows turn red or your rigger updates you and says, hey, I saved the file on Dropbox. You might want to update your reference. Well, you could ask him what he updated but in this case, I'll just choose everything because in some cases, we might not know what was updated during this process. So I'll check on everything and then click OK. Now you can see everything is green and some keyframes were added. And if I play these out, you can see we have some animation occurring just like we did in the original document. This is incredibly powerful and it opens up many possibilities, again, for master rigs or for team-based projects. All you need is Dropbox, some copies of Anime Studio, some talented people, and you have an awesome team-based workflow ready to go. One more thing I want to point out, this deals with syncing. We talked about before, let me jump back here to this document, how the reference layer has an independent channel right down here. And that's because we moved that layer by itself. And we talked all about that and how things can go off sync. But one thing I want to point out is that independent channel has a blue background. And when we hover over it, you'll see it says not referenced right there. So that gives you a clear indication of what's referenced and what's not. However, if you ever want to resync your channels so that this one follows the original's transform layer channel, all you have to do is right click and choose sync channel to original. When you do this, you'll see that my character snaps back on top of the original, and that's because they share the same transform properties. But now that has been resolved. And when I move the originals transform properties, if I come over here, let's grab the original transform layer, you can see that the copy is going to move along with it. Even though I can hide this, you can see there's the copy, even though it doesn't look like that because it's being overlaid, but it is falling along with those transform properties. Also, if you ever want, you can right click on any layer that's being referenced and choose to break the reference layer. What this will do is if I hide the original, it will retain all the animation that you did up to that point. But from here on out, any changes you make will be completely independent. It's as if you're working with a regular standard bone layer. There is a lot to talk about with layer referencing, and I'm hoping this video gives you a good idea of what it's all about. Just keep in mind what I showed and discussed here only scratches the surface. I'm sure there's many things out there that you talented artists can put to use with this new feature. So play around with it and let it enhance your own workflow. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio or more tutorials, visit anime.smithmicro.com.